So this video is going to give an overview of X32 and help demonstrate how to use the tool and also understand the content of the various windows. So first, I think it will be useful to demonstrate the methodology of how to use a debugger. As a malware analyst, you'll be analyzing the functions of a piece of malware. So it's key to understand what that looks like. So when analyzing a malware sample in X32, you'll begin at the main function. So this is the main body of the code where the code written by the malware author will start and end. However, within this function, the malware will make calls to other functions. These may be written by the malware author or will be Windows APIs that have been imported by the malware. For example, if the malware needs to create a file, it may use the Windows API create file A to create that file. As that is a legitimate Windows function, we wouldn't want to analyze the assembly code of create file A. We would be interested in the return values of that function and also the arguments that are being passed to the function before it is called or executed. From doing this type of analysis, we could see what the file is going to be called and where it is going to be installed on disk and also identify from the return value if the function successfully created the file or not. Code that we would be interested in analyzing would be a function that the malware author has written. In this example, let's pretend that the function I've named AAA has been written by the malware author and we want to investigate it further. In X32, there are two instructions you will use, step over and step into. If my instruction pointer that is the point to the next assembly instruction that will execute is set to call AAA. I could either step over this instruction or step, or step into it. If I step over it, the function will still execute. However, I won't see the instructions that have been run. If I use step into, I will jump to the address space where the function begins and see the content of that function. Within that function, there may be more functions that I want to look at. In this example, I could step into the triple C function. And again, I will then jump to a new address space where this function begins. By stepping through the code, I will eventually get to the end of the function, which is evidenced by the return command. And once this command is executed, I will then jump to the instruction directly after the call to the triple C function and I am back in the AAA function. Again, I can step through the code and again, we'll eventually hit the return instruction and, in, and jump to the instruction directly after that call to the AAA function. Windows API calls can be identified by the naming convention, which will begin with the DLL they are being loaded from. In this example, just use the name B as, as an example. However, as it is a Windows API, as I said earlier, I wouldn't want to step into this instruction as it hasn't been written by the malware author. It's not the malicious code we're interested in. I'll be interested in what has been pushed onto the stack prior to the function call being made, and also what is returned by the function after it has been executed. This should hopefully give you a good overview and understanding of the methodology used when analyzing malware in a tool such as X32. This can be extremely time consuming, so you wouldn't want to analyze every function written by the malware author. From your behavioral analysis of the malware, you may find something of interest that you would like to have a better understanding of. This sample we are analyzing is Emotet malware. When it infects a machine, it generates a random file name for the malware. So when I previously analyzed this sample, I concentrated on API calls that generated this activity and then looked at the malware was doing in and around this time. This is something that will be demoed in later videos. So we'll also need to know some basic assembly instructions. Now this isn't a you know, full list of what you need to know. However, it is a good foundation on which we can build on in later videos. So the push command will push a value onto the stack. Pop will uh, pop a value off the stack. So this could be used to you know, clean up the stack or pop a value into a register. Again, we'll touch on registers and this activity in later videos. Call will execute a function. So when you see this, a function is uh, being executed. Ret is when a 
function is ending basically and it's going to return the value of the completed function. JMP is where it's jumping to an address location. You'll see various different jumps and uh, how those work in other videos. CMP, so this is compare, so two values maybe being compared. Move, which is where data is being moved from one location to another. And we have add and sub, which is adding a value and subtracting a value. Now, we also have the registers as well. Now, these are used by a program to store data, which can then easily be referenced for later use by the malware. So we'll see these in X32, but these are what these registers are and uh, what they're used for. So EAX is used for addition, multiplication, and is often used to restore, um, sorry, store the value that is returned from a function. EBX is a generic register, so it's used for various operations. ECX is used as a counter, so we'll often see this used when a malware is initiating a loop and it's counting through the loop. EDX is another generic register. EBP and ESP, now we'll see these, in, I'll explain these in, uh, in greater depth in later videos when I go over um, explaining how stack memory works. But EBP is used to reference arguments and local, variant, uh, local variables Sorry, on the stack. And ESP is, is points to the last argument on the stack. ESI and EDI, they're used in memory transfer instructions. So that's just, again, a quick overview of what registers are. And we'll see these in X32 being used. And again, I'll explain um, you know, the ones that relate to stack memory in greater depth in another video. So on my desktop now, I have the binary that we've been using in previous videos. So I'm just going to drag that onto the X96 icon. And what that will do is it'll automatically determine if it's a 32-bit or a 64-bit executable. And you can see at the top, I've got X32 DBG loaded. So it's detected it's a 32-bit executable and loaded X32 uh, accordingly. In the top left-hand corner, we can see the name of the executable that we loaded, 267.exe. And we also have the module that we're currently looking at within the executable. At the minute, we're looking at ntdll.dll. Now, that's obviously a Windows DLL. What we want to get to is the attacker code. So if I just click at the top, debug, and then run, we'll hit a breakpoint, which on the right-hand side, we can see is the entry point of the malware. And at the top, we can see ntdll.dll has disappeared, and we're now looking at the module 267.exe. So you always want to make sure you're looking at the malicious code when you are doing your analysis in X32. Now, I'll, I'll go through some of the windows here in the content. So the main one in the middle here, we have the assembly code. So on the left-hand side, we have this blue arrow here, the EIP. That's the instruction pointer. So that's pointing at the next instruction that's going to be running our debugger. Highlighted in black, we have the address space within the executable that the instruction resides. So we can see in the middle here, we have call to 267.sub underscore 417c80. So that's our instruction, our assembly instruction, a call to this function. And on the left-hand side, this is the hexadecimal representation of that instruction. And on the right-hand side, under this hide FPU tab, these are the registers that I've mentioned. So at the top, we have EAX, and at the bottom, we have the EDI register. And underneath, we have the EIP again. So again, the instruction pointer, and it just contains the address of where the instruction pointer is currently located. So 40E022, and again, that tallies up with our you know, little black box in the top left-hand corner here next to the blue arrow. Underneath that, we have a list of uh, instructions and data that have been, has been pushed onto the stack. And then below that, we have the stack itself. So on the first column on the left-hand side, where we have the, you know, in black, we have uh, 0018FF8C. That is an address in memory. So that's a stack memory address. On the right-hand side is the content of what is in that address. So that could be a you know the content of a register it could be a memory address it could be some data and the addresses at the top are the lowest address and as you move down you move into the higher address space so again as i mentioned stack memory will be covered in depth in either the next video or the one after and the bottom left hand side we can see the dump windows now what we can do is we can click on these registers so if i right click on esp 
And if I just do following dump, I can see what's being stored in that register. And in that register, we have the address 18FFC. And then we can see here, when I've, when I've dumped that information, we can see it's, it's showing us the, that address space, what is being stored there in hex, and also the, if, you know, the ASCII representation of that, uh, of that hexadecimal data. So that's just sort of a, a quick stop overview of the various windows of X32 and what data is stored in them. Uh, and what we'll do is we'll just have a, we'll have a quick step through now just to sort of try and you know, gain a bit of familiarity with how to use the tool. So we mentioned earlier the next instruction is this call to a subroutine 417C80. So what's happened here is X32 has automatically um, generated these names. So it's 417C80 is going to be the address where this new function resides, this function that's being called. So I can either, as I mentioned before, I can either step into this function that's being called or I can step over it. And I can do that by going to debug. And you see here you have step into or step over. I can click it that way or these keyboard shortcuts of F7 and F8. And also in the main window here, there's a couple of buttons here at the top we can press. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to step into this. And when we do that, my screen's going to change and we're going to move to a new address location. So it'll be the 417C80. So if I just hit step into, we can see that's changed. So our EIP is now pointing to 417C80. And on the right hand side, again, that tallies up with the EIP underneath the registers. And we have some commands here. We have push EBP, move ESP into EBP, subtracting 10 from ESP. And you'll see this familiar pattern at the start of functions. And what's happening here is it's what's called the function prologue. And some space is being created on the stack for the function. Um, so again, what I can do is I can start stepping over this code and you know I can scroll up and down and look to it. And again, we can see some, we can see some Windows functions here being called. So this one here, call get system time as file time. So it's getting the system time of the machine. Obviously, again, I wouldn't want to step into this, but let's say it was, you know, maybe it's something that was of interest to me. I could select that instruction hit debug and then I can do run until selection and then I could start looking at perhaps what's being pushed onto the stack beforehand. So you can see here we have push EAX. Um, I could then step over that command. Again, I wouldn't want to step into it because it's a Windows API. And I could perhaps look at what's being returned to say EAX. But you know, if this was a, an instruction that was of interest to me. Um, as I scroll down, let's say, you know, there's nothing you know I'm particularly interested in here. I can see here at the bottom we have the return instruction. Now I could either step through, you know, you step over. So if I start stepping over these to get to that, or alternatively, I can just click on that, select debug, and do run until selection. And then if I hit step into or step over, it doesn't matter which. I am now returned. If you look, you can see the instruction pointer is pointing at 40E027, and I'm at this jump instruction. And that is directly after the instruction uh, that called the function we were just in. So again, that's just sort of a quick overview of what X32 is, how to navigate it in some you know, common assembly instructions. In the next couple of videos, we're going to look at using this to unpack a piece of malware manually. So we're going to be setting some breakpoints and uh, dumping some you know, code from memory to get our unpacked executable. And I'm also going to give sort of a, an overview sort of some the theory behind how the stack works. So stay tuned and like I say, more videos are on the way.